Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to Programming in Access 2013. My name is Steve Bishop. Today's video is going to be on hashing passwords. Now, hashing passwords is going to be a very important step for a lot of you to take, especially if you're in the healthcare industry or in the banking industry where user and client information is really important to be secured. And in a lot of cases, insurance companies or government agencies may have some sort of oversight, and your small little database that you've been working on may be in violation of some of those regulations. So it's really important that you do this hashing passwords because this is, in fact, one of those regulations that some of those industries do need to have. So hashing your passwords. What is hashing your passwords? Well, it's basically the process of taking the user's password and having some sort of key out there on the system, passing the password and the key into an encryption method, which just then simply spits out a randomized group of characters. So in this particular case, we've got a username, or we've got a user password, we've got a key, we're passing it into a method called encrypt, and then the encrypt method will return back these random sets of numbers, okay? So that's what we're going to do with our database. Now, you can create your encryption method to be just about anything you want, just so long as what the values that it's returning are some sort of randomized set of characters that aren't easily uh, reverse engineered. Okay? So let's go ahead and hop out here and take a look at our database. And as it stands, our passwords are in what we call clear text. Okay? They're just simply... Uh, very visible, and if somebody were to be, you know, if I had a coworker that was wandering, walking behind my seat here, they would be able to look at my computer monitor and get the usernames and the passwords for anybody that is on this table. That's really not secure, and that's one of the reasons why those government regulations are in place. So we want to go ahead and change this stored clear text password into something that more or less resembles this awkward set of numbers or letters. Now I just did a little bit of Google searching here uh, and you can feel free to go ahead and do your own search or you can even create your own encryption method but I'm just going to go ahead and use the one that I found online here by just doing this search of VBA hash password and in doing so I found on Access World forums in one particular thread Boyd here, Boyd Trimmel, who is a Microsoft MVP, was kind enough to put up a very, very simple, easy encryption algorithm here. So we're going to go ahead and copy this, and I'm going to post it into my globals module. Okay, so let me go ahead and just put some proper indentation here to make it look nice. And you'll see that his little method here, it's nothing difficult, and because it's not all that complex, I would probably recommend that you use something else other than this, but since this is just for demonstration, I figured this would be a good example here. Okay, so we've got our encryption method, which is going to take in a string and a long, it's a long value that is going to be a key, it's going to be our key, which is going to be of a type of long. Sorry, I kind of fumbled over my words there. So again, we're passing in a string, which is going to be the password. We're also going to pass in a key, which needs to be a type of long value, and it's going to return a string. And you can see all he's doing is he's just got this little for next loop that's going through here, uh, character by character, and grabbing some information, doing an XOR. And then that is going to spit out as the value that's returned from the encryption method. So we know that our passwords are going to be coming from our login screen, right? This login screen, we've got a password. And that's what we're going to pass in as our string here. But we need to figure out where our key is going to be stored. Now, you could certainly take and put it inside a table, and you could hide that table. Or you could also put it in your code, which is what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and make a public const, and I'm going to call it salt. Now, salt is actually a word that is commonly used for doing this particular uh, key. You know, basically, it's, it's another word for it, a key. So I'm just going to go ahead and call it public constant salt as a long. And when you're creating a constant, you need to give it a value immediately. So we're going to do the equal sign. And I'm just going to do 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 1, 2, 3, 4. Oops, 1, 2, 3, 4. And that's because that's the maximum number of characters that a long can take. And now what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and pass this salt constant 
every time that we use this key. As a matter of fact, I can probably go ahead and take this out and just do salt. I think that's all that we need there. That should work. Okay. So we've got our salt constant. We're going to pass in a password into our encryption and we're going to spit out whatever the encrypted data is using our salt. Okay. So that should work. Everything compiled correctly? Yes, it does. So let's go ahead and go back to our login table or our login form here. And on our login button here, let's go ahead and take a look. And right now, we're just comparing the password that's in the table to the password that they type into the text box. Well, we want to change this. We, want, we still want to compare the password because ultimately what we're going to do is we're going to change what's in here. As a matter of fact, let me go ahead and do that now. I'm going to take this password, which is just simply password, and I'm going to go down here to my immediate window. And if I do question mark encrypt, and I just do password, and I spit out, spit that out, I'm going to get this long sequence of numbers. I'm going to go ahead and copy that long sequence of numbers, and I'm going to store that as the password. And since these other two people have the same password, I'm just going to go ahead and copy and paste that, because we know that's right. Now I'm going to take this other password here, which is just something, copy it, and I'm going to do the same process. I'm going to just put that in here, and delete this, and get this random set of characters. Let me just copy that random set of characters here. Copy that, and put that in here as the password. And there we go. So now you can see, if somebody were to be wandering behind my, my chair here while I was working on this table, they would see this for the password and they would not have a clue about what the password is. And that's the idea. That's the principle behind hashing your passwords. It just adds that little extra layer of security uh, even from the development end. Okay, so we've got our passwords stored that are hashed here. Now we need to go ahead and include that in our login script here. So when the login happens, we want to compare the password from the record set, which is going to again return that garbledy gook that, come, that we stored as the password here. So that's what we're going to compare to. Now we can just simply do encrypt. And I can just pass in the password. And that's all that we have to do. Okay, we've now successfully done, uh, we've in successfully included this encryption method, and we're going to compare what comes out of the encryption with what is in the database. Okay, so we're encrypting what the user types in the text box, going to compare it with what's stored in the database, and if it doesn't match, then we're going to go ahead and kick out the error to the user. Okay, so we're not really doing much of anything different, we're just encrypting that password. But notice that it's only one way. I did not come up with any sort of decrypt password. And I think that's an important thing to, rec to remember. You don't want to do a decryption because then it would be simple enough for somebody to take this and just do a decrypt and take that long set of characters here. And then they w themselves would be able to retrieve the user's password and they'd be able to store it and you would never really know. Okay, so I really strongly recommend you don't do any sort of decryption for this hash. Uh, I, I would just only do the encryption method. Okay, so let's go ahead and test it all out. I'm going to go to my login screen and put in the wrong password. And sure enough, incorrect password. Now let's try the right one. I'm doing my P-A-S-S-W-O-R-D, which was the password that I created. I click on login, and it asks me if I want to turn on the bypass key. I do want to go ahead and keep that on. Okay, so there you go. That's how you can hash your passwords. Again, feel free to mix up this uh, this algorithm, this this function, this encryption function. It maybe go find another one. There's a bunch of different encryption methods that you could certainly search for. Uh, 
And if you want a Google search to get something more complicated, or if you want to come up with one on your own because you want to get all fancy, you're more than welcome to do so. All right, so that's going to do it for this video. Again, if you have any questions, if you have any other uh, video suggestions, please feel free to pass them along to me, and I'll see if I can get to them. Thank you.